Hey guys, we're back here. It's my workshop. I'm Colin Way. We've got Charlie behind the camera. Um, today is um, going to be a full one. So this is all about bringing the skill center to your home. Um, the full list of projects um, is going to actually stretch us today. So I really, really um, hope to get all these done. Um, we're going to make um, a mixture of things. Let just go over some of the things that we made last week, just to show you that uh, um, I, I stopped working after the uh, the camera goes off. We are we are doing things all the time. We're making things all the time. So if you remember last week, we'd done a mixture of things. Really, we had a technical day, um, and I can't even remember what we were doing on Tuesday. I'm sure it'll come back to me in a minute. But we looked at some thread chasing. That's right, thread chasing, long hole boring. Uh, we looked at creating um, scrap wood bowls, all those sorts of things. So I have finished a few things. So that's our lamp that we um, we finished. I've got to put the flex in still, so that's just lo loosely screwed onto there, but the side hole is in now. I made the bottom hole a little bit deeper, so we can add things like um, uh, cord clamps, which is really, really important. And if you remember, that was inspired by my first piece I ever turned about 37 years ago. That was this one. Since talking to you last, I've just skimmed the outside edge. So I haven't messed around with the shape too much. Um, I think it's important just to, to remember where we where we start. So I've, I've kept that the same. But what I wanted to do is brighten up. So it's just turned. I've still got to sand and polish it. And then I'm going to fit it up. And I'm going to keep that one. It's my first ever piece of turning. So really important. Um, so that's those two. Um, what else we did? We've done the thread chasing as well. So one of the pieces, I've actually turned into this to a little box just for a little bit of fun so I can take around and demonstrate now. Now I've got an extra part of demonstrating or an extra um, project in the demonstrating list. And if you remember, that was a little bit of thread chasing. So internal, external thread. Um, and I just, like I say, just turn that into a little box. I may turn the other one. We turned another thread, if you remember. I may do that one into another box, we'll see, or I might just leave it like that just to see, um, you know, the rough, the rough piece. Um, the scrap wood bowl turned quite nicely. We've got the base all finished now. And that uh, works really, really nice. What I like about this one, um, if you remember, I'm gonna keep mentioning his name because he's the influence behind it. Brian um, had watched a, a video by Olivia Gomez that's where we got the idea. So thank you, Olivia. If you ever get to see this this video, um, your idea. Thank you for inspiring us all. But that was the bowl that we got through it uh, from it. And um, what I like about this one is the two dark stripes. I think that that lifts the rest of the timber there. So I was, I was quite pleased with that piece. All finished now. So that one. Um, I've also been doing some hollow forms. So as well as these live videos, I'm making lots of things on my own um, uh, YouTube channels and from a website and for Axminster. Um, in terms of recorded videos, so we're doing an awful lot. So um, one of the highlights uh, in between shooting live videos last week was the Tiki Gods. Now this is gonna be to promote a tool called the Arbitech. And this video is coming out for Axminster Tools. So playing around with carving. So just um, a little bit away from my regular turning spots. This is a couple of little Tiki Gods. Of course, now I have to make a Tiki Bar to go with it. So that, uh, that'll be a whole new video in itself. So that was, out of the palm that we turned a few weeks ago, actually. So that palm tree is doing well. It's creating this, a lot of stuff for us. Hollow forms. So we've been using the woodcut, the Pro Master, to create some more hollow forms. This is a lovely piece of rippled ash. Um, it's been uh, lacquered, so I've used chestnut um, uh, spray lacquer, acrylic lacquer on this one. All it needs to do now, this is now dry, so I'm going to take the base off just by creating a, a wooden dome there, holding between centers and, and taking that base away. So that's a nice little hollow form. That was really for um, some pictures on the website. So that was the, uh, the reason we, the reason I've done that one. So today, enough of what we've done. Let's start making some fresh things. So the plan is today is going to be, or oh, I'm going to make four different projects. So we're going to do a vase, and this is all about smaller items. So a very small vase, we're going to fill that vase with some flowers, so the hill cut flowers with the skew chisels again. I want to do a little bottle stopper, so use one of the kits um, that we sell. Um, and then just a little bit of fun, some spinning tops. We'll have a little spinning top race at the end. See if I can beat myself um, as we spin one of the tops. So we'll have a look at that. Uh, that's going to have to be a little bit of help from Charlie, just keeping an eye on the spinning tops. So there's going to be a lot of close-up work today. I'm purposely going to go quickly. Um, you can always watch the video back again um, when it goes out on YouTube or back on Facebook on a website 
So there's always options to see this again, but I'm purposely going to keep turning as I'm talking um, and as you're asking questions, of course, always welcome. Please, please ask questions. Um, so that's what today's is. So we're going to start off with a nice little um, vase. This is a piece of laburnum I've got on here. Um, Charlie behind the scenes has got his visor on. Um, I'm going to be wearing a visor on this one. We might have the dust extractor going a little bit as well. Um, purely because this bit of laburnum here is quite dusty um, when we initially rough it down. So, like I say, I'm going to talk as we turn. Um, I also understand that the, the, the sound does um, tack down a little bit when we've got the machine running, so um, I'll be closer to the camera. Right then, Charlie, if you want to bring that camera above the workpiece, we'll get cracking. Lovely. So you can see that. Oh, I'll move the light. We don't need that light in your way. And we've got lights on the camera if we need them. And I think we will actually. Let me just put some light on. Tell me, Charlie, if it bleeds out. Right, I'm going to whip through this one. So this is a piece of laburnum and we're about to do a nice little vase. Charlie's just standing to one side out of the way just in case. Charlie, let's pop the dust extractor on while I rough this down. this down at around about 1600 revs. So this is a three quarter roughing gouge on the tool rest. So at this point this point it's fairly gnarly it's quite rough we're cleaning that up in a minute I want to create it's full of worm as well we're across me with this one I'm going to create a step now for my chuck I've already sized my calipers What's a long centre? So the long centre there, we can turn the lathe uh, dust extractor off now, Charlie. The long centre, so that's a pro drive. Pro drives are available in the smaller 16mm or the bigger 22. Okay. So, and they basically have a little sprung centre. That centre is sprung centre, so this drives using those teeth. I use that far more now than a four prong drive. I find it far more efficient. There we are, so that's prepped for the chuck. So let's get the chuck on the lathe. So we're gonna use, uh, in this case, seed jaws. Seed jaws, if you remember seed jaws, they have a nice little tooth on the inside um, and that's what we're going to use just to grip that little ridge. So we'll do this super quick. I am going to sand. I'd like to finish this. There we are. At this stage, I'm not overly concerned if that's not centered up. Let's pop the tool rest there. If I can get the tailstock centered to make contact, we will. Let's use a smaller tool rest. There we are now, I can get that centre in. Just, just centre up my headstock. There we are, and we're back turning again. If you're into production turning, if you're going to be production turning, then you do all everything to that stage before you move on. Okay, back with the visor. I'm going to use a small bowl gouge next. And we're just going to start off with a nice skew cut. So 45 degrees, bevel rubbing.
let's have a look and see what the finish is. I know we've got a lot of uh, bits of worm in there, so let's, let's get rid of some of that. What's going to happen here, of course, with the, um, the heart with being a different colour, we're going to get that lovely transition between the heart and the sap. There we go. This is only a small vase. We're going to turn the flowers to suit this. So, I think now if we can take the tailstock out of the way. The tailstock's going to need to be there um, because we're going to drill a hole in a second. Um, how much pressure should you apply with the tailstock centre, assuming a blank like you have there? Um, how much pressure? I tend to go as soon as we soon as we meet resistance, then I'll give it usually about a turn. Um, it obviously depends on the size of the workpiece and the centres that you're using. Depends on the size of the workpiece and the centres that you're using to how much pressure you put on. If it's a really mushy pit bit and it's a big vase, for instance, then you want a big centre and you can add a lot more pressure. Um, and also, you're going to keep that pressure on for longer. Right, Charlie, this is really important today, your job of telling me how much time I'm wasting. Um, it's been 15 minutes. 15 minutes, right. A lot of that was me talking at the beginning, so we're doing all right. So I'm going to use, this is just a bit I've got ready for the um, bottle stoppers actually, but that's going to be the bit we use. Around about 900 revs for drilling is ideal. I'm not going in deep, this is just going to be a fairly short one and it's a dried flower vase. Keep the swarf nice and clear. Always one hand on the chuck. Now that drill bit's dead hot. Don't want to be touching that drill bit now. Okay, so it's really, really hot. So be careful with that. Okay, so now I can start working on the end or hollowing out. And we're only going to hollow out the actual funnel of the of the bar. So Charlie, I think that we want to come around that three-quarter position now. It. Come down nice and low so you can see it. Okay, so there's what will be the funnel. So we're just going to bring that curve around. We're going to swap over. We've got rid of a lot of that debris now. I'm just going to go to my goggles so you can hear what I'm saying a little bit easier. So I want a nice little convex curve. So rub the bevel first, and then as you push up the length of the tool, flute around about the two o'clock position. Just keep moving that handle round and that curve will form nicely. So one more of those. Um, someone says that they always seem to have issue grabbing pieces with a chuck. Um, and they find expanding into a recess more secure. Yeah. What are they doing wrong? No, you're not doing anything wrong. Um, you you will find that the um, uh, this more secure um, grab will be expanding. Generally, you're on a, a dovetail. But the biggest thing, and I learned this from um, from a, a, a fantastic woodturner, Phil Irons. Um, he taught me that you have to size very accurately. You, yes, there's a massive amount of movement on a chuck. If you're doing something that requires a good grip though, you must size at the perfect circle. And there is a very specific size, you know, if you go outside of that perfect circle, you're either gripping only on the two corners or the center of that one jaw. Um, and also it does require a little bit of pressure. So, um, you know, if you want to use dovetails where you're going to retain um, the surface, you're not cleaning that surface up afterwards. And in that case, you need dovetails and be very accurate with the grip. If you're going to do a big hollow form, then you can use something like a gripper and rely purely on 
um, the amount of grip you're giving it, so a lot of pressure. Um, so I would say the best advice for you is be accurate with your sizing and you'll find it much, much easier. Or more secure anyway. There we are. So I'm just going to start shaping the neck now. And even though I'm going to sand, I'm probably not going to give it as much as I would normally. There we are. Just rounding the bottom of that neck over. The shoulder's already done. We've done that shoulder up there. I just want to move now down to this foot. Now I'm, I'm stopping the lathe to do that because I'm going to get really close to the chuck. Next job, just to... Um, use a passing tool to create where we're going to actually finish it off. So we'll do a couple of cuts here. Some people are saying the connection is poor, so I'm just going to check. Yeah. It is a really tough connection today. I've already looked at this, guys. I don't know what it is. Um, I'm going to blame the heat. It's lovely down here. Um, I don't know what it is. The connection has been amazing for so many weeks now. Um, the only similarity I can assume is we we'll blame it on the weather. Um, what's the optimum size for the SK114 jaws? C jaws. C jaws? Yeah, I'll have to measure them. I'll have to measure them, but they are listed in the catalogue so it just so happens that I've got the catalogue here everybody okay we're gonna look in the catalogue get the optimum size it's listed um, and just for your information we have plenty of catalogues if you want a catalogue and you don't have one um, phone up the call centre go online and order your copy today um, so I'm looking at the SK100 C jaws. Internal grip is 56 millimeters. External 70, and that should be the same for the SK114. Let me just double check that for you because they are. Are they the jaws you're using? Uh, they are the C jaws. I'm using the SK114 C jaws here. So let's just have a look. So yeah, absolutely the same as the 100. 56 mil internal, 57 external. Okay, we're nearly finished this vase now. So I'm just going to bring rough the shape out first with the bottom of the bowl gouge and then turn the bowl gouge over. Bevel rub. It's been 20 minutes. Thank you, Charlie. Bevel rub. Nice and controlled there just to make sure. So there we are. Have a look at that. So we can start sanding that now. So there's a mixture of techniques there. We're using a little bit of a roughing cut. We're using that bevel rubbing cut as well, which is also important. Then we can go straight on now, Charlie. I'm gonna do some sanding very quickly. We're gonna round over, gonna round over that hedge. I don't like sharp edges on these types of things. They damage ever so quickly. Dust extraction on, buddy. Get rid of that sharp edge first so it doesn't cut me. Tidy up the inside of that curve. So this is a hundred grit, only because I want to get down there nice and quickly. There we are, 150. Charlie, in the, in the cupboard over there, there's a clear jar with a, like a, a ready orange solution. No, the other one. That's the one. So there we are, a little bit of that, a little bit of that. 
little bit of 400. We've still got those, um, we still got a little bit of worm in there. Okay, distracted the door now, shall we? A little bit of worm in there somewhere, there we are. If I wasn't worried about that, if I wanted to say, for instance, the worm was a bit of a feature, a bit of a talking point, all I do is after this was done, pop it in the right way for 10 seconds. That's enough to do what it needs to do to the wood worm. They won't bother you again after that. Almost like a popcorn maker. There we are. Beautiful bit of timber. Are you going to undercut when parting? Yeah, we're going to do a nice little recess, or well not a recess, but um, a slightly angled cut so when it sits on the table it doesn't rock around all over the place. There we are, that's quite nice. I'll be finished on that one. I'll tell you what, um, in the cupboard there, Charlie, there's another pot, sort of ready colour, round one, it says Hampshire Sheen on it. Let's use a little bit of Hampshire Sheen high gloss wax. Okay, so that was a chestnut sanding sealer. Um, I have diluted it a little bit with um, thinners, and now we're gonna use the Hampshire Sheen. This is the high gloss one. Um, so we're gonna use a bit of that. And before I do, I just want to sand very lightly that sanding sealer. There we go. I'm whizzing through this really quickly, guys, because I want to get more, loads of stuff in for you today. There we are. So a bit of the, bit of the high gloss. Don't worry, if you get it in like little fissures like that, you can always brush it out afterwards. Let's get the actual polish working first. Right, handful of shavings, or some tissue, and we'll wipe off some of that excess. This stuff, um, I don't know the exact formula, um, Martin will probably add, but there's a lot of, Martin's the owner of uh, Hampton Sheen by the way, um, there's a lot of carnauba wax in here I believe, um, and we've spoken about carnauba a lot, and it gives us a wonderful finish, but that, that wax that we've just put on, look how little I put on and the effect it's giving. There we are. So let's just check those holes, yeah. I'll just grab a little brush, a little stippy brush. Just one of these little cheapy brushes. You just give that a brush out. There we are, I'll give it another buff over and he's done. Right, so now we'll part that one off. And move on to the next project. So a little parting tool. This one's a one eighth three mil parting tool. And I suppose there's about seven mil there now, so without anything on your wrists or your arm, can we see in there? I want to be able to see the cup there, Charlie. When you're parting off, just take your time. Tiny, tiny little cup. Nice and gentle. If you're nice and gentle, you'll only have a tiny little nib at the end to take off. And that's all that happens. As dramatic as it gets, it can be fairly nervy to start with. It can be fairly nervy to start with. All right, so I'm just gonna knit, for now, I'm just gonna knit that off. There we are. Come in a little bit closer, mate. Don't leave the sign now. All right, so, that's what we've got. I, I would want to sand that, so I put my little rotary sander back in the lathe again just to make that nice and clean, a little bit of wax on the bottom. But that's it, that's a nice little vase. 
Um, and that was a relatively small piece of timber. It was a limb section. Now we're just going to make a few little flowers to put in there. Or oh, I'm going to make a single flower. I've already prepped up some and coloured them for you. Um, but I just want to show you how we can make some little flowers. I'm thinking now, really, you can make these as... If you do craft shows, that sort of stuff. I always think these little projects are great for um, giving out to people as they walk past. Um, you entice people in if you can give things away and these are made so so quickly um, that you can do exactly that. Um, with the undercut do you get very close to the chuck near the handle of the parting tool? Um, not really, not really. I suppose it depends on how short your piece of timber is. I was going to use that piece of timber um, but decided it was going to be too close and wouldn't wouldn't allow you to see what was going on as easily. Um, not not really, no. I mean, it depends on the chuck that you have, but this is so, these are, you know, it was so flush to the lay that this is completely round that the actual jaws give me some distance. So, uh, you know, I can get away with it a little bit more. Those jaws give me a little bit of distance. Okay, so let's do some flowers. So we're going to add a different chuck. Or the same type of chuck with a different jaw. and a different bit of timber. We're going to use some lime next. So let's, but basically just a, a piece of lime cut to 25 mil square. Now this is going to create one of our little flowers with a skew cut. Okay, so if you're nervous about the skew, this is great bit of practice. I'm going to show you a couple of these flowers. So we're going to make just a couple of these. All right, I'm just going to make this one for you just to see. Um, and these are airbrushed afterwards. So not a lot of work here, very, very quick. Charlie's checking his watch. Um, the longest project was the vase. Half now. So we're gonna rough down. There we are, so just a nice quick rough down. And now we're gonna slow the lathe down a little bit. Bring that back. Let's actually let's make this smaller. That's going to be a massive flower for that little bar. So just a little skew cut. Now we're going to use the heel of the skew and push the fibers. Push, push, push. That creates a little burr. Push again. Push again. And we're going to keep pushing back, back, back. Um, could you hold that with the o O'Donnell jaws? Absolutely, yes. I would have said the, the OD ones, the smaller, would be better. Um, or the cylinder jaws, the small type, again, they would be, they would be good. Um, compressor's just going on now. And I'm going to start, let's just put a single colour, or no, we'll put a couple of colours on here. They're running very slowly. Um, we're going to start off with a nice deep red in the middle. And then we'll do a nice yellow. And of course where the yellow and the red blend over each other you get that orange and that's all we'll do. I'll just do that single colour, like sunflower type colour scheme. We can 
go off. I'm going to show you the colour in a second when we take this one off the machine. So same thing here, we're going to part off now though, instead of with a parting tool, just with a skew. So just pare down. It's nice doing little projects like this with a skew because it's not that intimidating. If you get a catch, oh well, just carry on and do another one. There we are, nice little colourful flower, that one. Now what you would do with that one is a little um, one millimetre hole in the back, then use florist wire. Now you can get green florist wire, which is ideal. Um, I haven't got green at the moment, so I'm resorting to um, my regular wire. But even so, that's gonna give us a real mixture of flowers. So we've got some different colour schemes going on there, some little daffodils, um, some little anemones. Um, and then just, we'll use those in our vase. Okay, and you know, at a craft show, just giving a few of those away um, or helping them to decorate your vase, um, you'll, I'm sure you'll be really, really popular. So nice little project. We're gonna keep, we're gonna show you these projects all at the end again. So um, don't worry if things are going a little bit too quick for you. We will get, get you a second view. What type of paint are you using? So we're using chestnut spirit stain. Chestnut spirit stain. So as a woody, as woodworkers, that spirit stain works so well on timber. Um, you can use airbrush paint, but I like the transition that you get from the stain. It, and it dries so quickly, you know, that was dry instantly. What, what else have we got to do? So we going to do, how much time have I had, Charlie? 33 minutes. 33 minutes. So we're going to do it. We're going to do it. We're going to go over now to bottle stopper. Could we just have a close up of the daff, the daffodil? Daffodils, yeah. Daffodils are always one of the more popular ones. There we are, a little daffodil. So just a longer cut when you get to that centre and only a couple of frills to the outside edge um, for those. Slightly smaller one. We'll give you a nice overview of everything in a moment. We're just gonna, I'm just gonna prep this one up. I wanted to, I completely forgot about this. So I was gonna prep this up before we actually went live on here. So this is a beautiful bit of timber. This is a nice bit of you. Okay, I'm gonna keep that. That's gonna be our feature. We're gonna keep that little bit in there. Um, and this is gonna be the bottom. Uh, it's the top, sorry. So that's nice and large. I'm just going to hold that there for the minute. I'm not, don't worry, I'm not going to do a massive amount of turning on here. I'm just using that to drill. So it's not going to fly out anywhere. Tail stop's going to be needed. I'm going to use that same drill bit. It was, it's an eight mil thread on our bottle stoppers. I'm not going to show you a couple of type of bottle stoppers now. So, that's one. That's, that would be more the, the, the traditional one that you see an awful lot. These are fairly new to us. These these are uh, another interesting one that's out there. And both of those shapes are available in the gold and the silver. But basically what I need to do, you've got a joiner between the wood and the metal. So it's this PC. You've got a cutting thread for the wood and you've got a machine thread to, to screw into here. So I need to actually fix that in there before I start turning it. Uh, we always turn or drill the hole before you do any turning. And we're going to use a special arbor then to drive that bottle stop. So just... I want to be just longer than the actual hole or longer than the thread need, um, actually is. Now that can come 
just to one side for the minute. I'm going to true up the underside so it sits on my arbor nicely. Um, what gouge florist wire was it? Gouge? Or gauge. Gauge. Now yeah. you've got me. This is someone that knows their florist wire, obviously. Um. <laughs> It's one millimeter. I measured it. It's about one mil. So what gauge that is? Is that is it measured in mil? I don't know. But I check. I put my vernier on it early when I was sizing the drill bits, and they're one mil. Or if you haven't got one mil, just add a bit more glue. Epoxy resin. I was using to glue those in. Um, now we're just going to tidy up that bottom edge. So. Because that's not held in there overly securely, I'm only holding that on corners. I'm just going to skim it. There we are, that's enough. Don't do any more turning than that. You don't need to. Just cleaning up that underside, that's all we're doing. So right, that can now come out, the chuck can come off, and we're gonna use a little a light pull, light pull? Bottle stopper arbor. There we are, so the bottle stopper arbor itself, that's it, it has the machine thread, to match our little bit of metal. And then we've got just a protective little cap. This is a bit of nylon. It just stops things from, or stops your chisels from hitting the, the metal all the time. Um, that can go and be screwed in. The other thing about this is the diameter of this is the same diameter as the bottle stopper kits. So you turn down to that diameter and you know everything's going to match up. A little bit like um, a pen bushing. There we are. So we'll have a, a regular tailstock centre. I'm going to use a single pointed centre for this one. Up there. And again, you, you'd, um, if you're doing a few of these, get everything set up to that point. And then you can change things around. So this is a shape that I've been doing for a long, long time. Turning about 1,800 revs. So we use a bowl gouge initially. Going to make a roughing cut. Give 40 minutes. 40. So once we've done the initial roughing cut, then you can revert to a planing cut. So we're down to solid material. So planing cut is where we use the bottom of the gouge with the bevel rubbing. So turn into the piece and you get that lovely little skew cut. There we are. So let's start shaping. So let's go for a little bead nice and close. Of course we're using a skew so tool rest comes up a wee bit. We're going to use use the skew just to roll a little a little half bead here. Using the heel we'll put a little reverse cut. What am I doing? I've got to get down to that diameter. Forget that, guys. Sorry. Um, do you use a bowl gouge rather roughing gouge because it's a small piece? Yes, exactly that. If you think that poor little thread in there, if I was to use a big bowl gouge, what it would do to it? So there we are. That's better. Right, so forgetting, forgetting what I was doing then for a minute. So now I can do my V cut and roll over.
right now we can start thinking about a shape so this is a, a little bit too long for what I want so I'm going to take some of that away and then round over again my my background really is, is production work so you know you'll see me picking up fewer tools than Done a lot. That doesn't mean to say that's right. So if you want to use a spindle gouge, for instance, here, do it. All right, that's as deep as I'm going there because we've got that that little hole for the thread. Are, and then back to the skew. Yeah, so spindle gouge would be a good one here. Um, Obviously the skew chisel was not using an awful lot anyway. Bowl gouge. But if you wanted to use a roughing gouge to initially, use it, just be very gentle. That little thread won't take a huge amount. A little bit of sanding. Well, I'll the extractor on, Sean, just a little bit. And just bring that as close as you can get it. Don't worry about getting it right in there. starting the extension. The workshop extension is going to be started this weekend so my new extractor is going to be fitted um, fairly soon. I'll bring you a, a view of that as we get closer but uh, it is starting. So just quickly going through this abrasive. There's a lot going on in this piece again. This is um, a fairly gnarly bit. There's a few cracks and bits of worm and stuff. But you're going to get the idea. So we're down to 240 now. Everything I've been doing this event, Lee, um, is the same grit. So we start with 100, 150, 240, 400. And then if the timber needs it, we go on to a 600. Timber, what timber will only need if it's a fairly coarse, uh, sorry, a fairly dense material. Um, otherwise you'll find scratches will show up otherwise. It's been 45 minutes. 45 minutes, something like that. So this week, like I said, our intention is to do these small bits today. And then on Thursday we're into um, useful workshop tools. And we're going to make um, a workshop mallet and uh, a, a brattle. So we'll show you the brattle. I'm going to show you at the end of this demonstration as well what we're doing. Um, do you get the sandpaper through Axman stuff? Yeah, absolutely. So this is known as RB paper, the ultimate abrasive. There we are. Just in case you didn't hear that, guys, that was RB paper, or otherwise known as the ultimate abrasive. Got a flickery light. There we are. Better. Right, a little bit of chestnut friction polish. What I generally do after the friction polish is just put the buffing wheel on and give it a, another coat with carnauba wax over the top. I know the friction polish has a huge amount of carnauba over it, but what happens is you start sort of using, you know, your sweaty hands to take that off the arbor um, and then screw it onto the thread and all those sorts of things. It just starts to get a little bit tarnished. So a little bit of a, a finish at the end 
with it, it can't all but works really, really well. So let's stop and have a look at that. Ignore the lumps and bumps and chips and goes in it, but beautiful timber again, look. Really nice swirls. Most of the what you'll find most um, most flaws in timber um, are there. Um, accompanied with some really beautiful um, bits of of grain. So look, I'm putting a lot of pressure on that. Now, in doing that, I've sort of tarnished that a little bit. I've got grubby marks all over the thing. So a little bit of um, uh, of a burnish with the the buffing wheel will really really help. But there, that's a, a very quick bottle stopper. Okay, a little bit, little bit of U this was, so a little bit of gnarly U. 10 pound flaws I call them, or 10 pound features. Makes that completely unique to the next one. Okay, you're quite welcome to nick that design if you like it. Um, okay, moving on. So what we're doing now, we're doing, we're doing some spinning tops. We'll have a bit of fun with this at the end. We'll see if we can turn a spinning top in the same time it takes for one to spin. Okay, um, keep your questions coming in even when we're not live, guys, because we do get to them, we will answer them, and we're possibly, I can't confirm this yet, but possibly next week we're going to look at doing another Q&A. Go. So, spinning tops. I'll do one nice and slowly and explain it, and then we'll speed one up. Um, from the past session, you burnished the piece with shavings. What does that do? Uh, so, what that does, if you think about a piece of tissue, um, if you go and if you've got a, a, a high amount of, of wax on the piece, um, or oil on the piece, then there's only so much a bit of tissue can take in. Shavings are being porous and they fall away. You'll take off all the excess, but you then go to tissue afterwards to, to buff up. Um, so it just means that you're not just smearing the finish across the surface. That was it. Charlie, can you leave me just for a minute and get a, uh, get a tray? We're gonna spin these on the tray. If you ask a question, guys, Charlie's just popped out for a minute to get a tray. We're going to look to spin one of these in a moment. So what we're doing here, roughing down with a bowl gal. And we're going to turn in the, turn in the flute to give me a skew cut. Then we can start thinking about the shape. Now I need to sharpen the gouge. So before I carry on, I'm going to sharpen that gouge. In fact, let's just, as Charlie's not here, let's just go to a different gouge to keep that going. Now what you, you've got to think about with a, um, a spinning top is the least amount of friction as possible will give you a much better spinner. Now I want this one to spin and spin and spin. So I'm going to try and turn the top in the time it takes this one to run down. fairly small. Um, think about the little fingers that are going to be used to spin this. This is a six mil bowl gouge, this one. Now before I part this off, let's just add a little bit of colour. And um, we're going to use some little paint pens. Alright, so little paint pens, cut Charlie, can everyone see those? Um, let's go for, go for a blue, go for a blue and a red. Oh, let's go for a green, might as well whilst we're there. 
you will have an aid running too quick, have it fairly slow and you, you can let your imagination do the rest. Lovely vibrant colours these paint pens. Um, get these pretty much any um, anywhere that sells sort of office supplies. And this is one of the first projects I was talking about this last week. One of the first projects Charlie's done. And, and his brother Finn, we we're making little spinning tops. So there we are, let's go and just part that off with a skew. Um, turning speed back up again. a little spinning top. All right, that shot. It's just a nice little addition, those paint pens, they give such bold, vivid lines. So let's have a go at spinning that one. Thank you, Charlie. I'll bring the camera, the piece to the camera. All right. Hang on, let's have another go. I want this to spin for ages. I don't have enough time to wait for that. Now you're gonna to have to trust me everybody because what I'll do is I'll get Charlie panning back and forward. Um, let's, we'll put that there Charlie. In a minute we're gonna have a spin but I wanna set myself up. If I put on the, my lathe bed, I'll stop it through the shavings. So. And what would be a good first lathe? What a good first lay. The good first lay. I love this machine. Um, I, this is the best, best lathe I've ever owned. The best lathe Axminster tools have ever produced, in my opinion. Um, however, you have to be able to afford a lathe like this. If you are just starting out and pennies are, are stretched, then I would go with a bench top machine, maybe a small one, a variable speed one, if you can afford a variable speed one. Um, but basically what I'm getting at is, is what you can afford. Um, if you want to do all the projects I've done today, then you can be, um, you can have a small bench top machine. Um, they're one of the good craft machines that we do is the, the 1000, so oh, sorry, it's the 1100 now. Um, that's the distance between uh, centers. So it's floor standing, proper lathe, variable speed through the Verimatic um, handle. Um, great machine to get you started. It's right. been 55 minutes. 55 minutes, right. We're gonna spin. Just a quick picture of me spinning, Charlie. Quick, quick, quick. Ready? Oh, that was a really poor spin. Wait, what, what are we doing? Back to me. So the main thing here is it has to be secure. And then I'm not going to bother with a skew cut, we're just going to give ourselves a nice little point. I'm not going to colour it. It's not the prettiest one, but look back, Charlie, quick, quick, quick. <laughs> Keep it on there. And what timber are you using for the spinning tops? Both of those are maple. And does the turning head on your lathe rotate 
to be yeah. able to turn larger diameter blanks. Yes, it does. So Charlie just studies that camera. Let's have a quick look at what we've done today. We'll talk about the lathe. Can't remember what I've done that or that one. So we've done small projects today. And I haven't touched that, that's still spinning. Still spinning. So, um, four projects today. Um, we started off with the vase. We then went on to the little flowers with the airbrushing, then onto the bottle stopper, and finally onto our uh, spinning tops. Perfectly cute timing. And now don't forget, so Nick, uh, on Thursday, when you come back here, we're gonna be doing two projects. I want to do workshop mallet, really useful, I'm using this one all the time, and you've seen me use this time and time again, this little, um, that's a six inch nail, copper piping, and then we know how to turn the handle, but I'm gonna go through the whole process with you, so a couple of really useful workshop items, that's on Thursday. Start thinking about questions that, like I said, potentially next week we're gonna do a Q&A session again, um, but I hope you've enjoyed that. In the meantime, um, have a go, they're all a bit of fun. The speed thing was just a bit of fun for me. Um, if you're new to turning, speed is not an issue. I keep telling you that. Um, so until Thursday, we're going to see you um, same time, same place, four o'clock at my workshop. Um, see you then. Bye bye.